Good morning, friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Sarah, and I am one of the pastors at the Vine Church, and I'm just so thankful that you've tuned in today. I was wondering if I could ask you a question. I was wondering if you've ever experienced something just phenomenal, where you saw something, you witnessed something that was just amazing, and it's something that you're never, ever going to forget. I was thinking about this question this week, and I was reminded of the solar eclipse way back, and I think it was 2017, maybe August 2017, there was a solar eclipse, and we, we'd heard that it was coming, and so we, my family and I, we drove up to the summit of Autanum Ridge in the, in the Cascades near Yakima. And we drove all the way up the mountain to this spot that was uh, almost above the tree line. There was just very few trees and it was right at the top. And so we could see almost 360 degrees um, around us and it was sunny and it was absolutely stunning up there. And we were waiting for, for this natural phenomenon to happen, the, the solar eclipse. And the solar eclipse is, is when the sun and the moon and the earth align just so, so that the moon blocks the sun and, and shades the earth. And so we were sitting there with our, with our kids, Micah and I and our two girls, and we had the special glasses, you know, that everyone was, was buying at the time. It was hard to get, but we had the special glasses. And I remember when it happened and I never experienced anything like that before. It was sunny and bright. And then all of a sudden you could see a shadow moving over the sun and pretty soon it covered almost all of the sun and I looked out and what had previously been this bright gorgeous clear day had this like orange hue this tint about about it 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 felt a bit eerie almost like the twilight zone or something and I remember thinking oh my goodness this is so amazing what an neat experience to be a part of. And as I reflect on that experience, I was a third grade teacher for, for nine years in our community here. And I taught about solar eclipses. I mean, we taught, we did a whole unit on the solar system and, and we looked at different things like that. And I taught about it, but this was totally different because I got to experience it for myself. And that's completely different. And so today we're going to talk about um, the, we're going to go back to our series in 1 John, and, and John is an eyewitness to Jesus. And John writes as an eyewitness to Jesus. And so we're going to hear this, this experience come out in, in the words that he uses, his amazement at what he saw as an eyewitness for Jesus. So last week, if you were with us or if, if you joined us online, um, you know that Carrie read the entire letter of 1 John 4. So thank you so much, Carrie, for doing that. And that's unusual for us to, to hear a whole book of the Bible in one setting like that. But it's so good for us to get the whole picture. And so today we're going to start biting off just little chunks of the text. And so we're actually just going to be in four verses today, the first four verses, the little intro to 1 John. And it's very poetic in nature. And so as you listen, listen for, for just the beauty and, and expression in this scripture. So 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. We, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. 
We write this to make our joy complete. That's 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And if you were with us last week, you heard a little bit about uh, the background and the context for this letter. I want to just summarize real briefly for you. But this letter is a general letter written by the Apostle John later in his life to the house churches around Ephesus, and, and this is in modern day Turkey. And the churches at this time were in turmoil. There were false teachers denying that Jesus was the Christ and denying that Jesus was God in human form. And, and there was a group of these people who had left the church. And not only had they left the church, but they were living in, in ways that were contrary to the way of Jesus, and yet they were claiming that they knew God, and they were trying to convince other Christians to join them in their way of living. And so it was a very unsettling and very divisive time for the churches there. And so John writes this letter to reassure the churches of the truth in the midst of this upheaval. So let's look at it and see what we have in store for us today. Verse one, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. We, that is eyewitnesses. This is John speaking, and he's speaking in plural because he's talking about himself and others like him who had witnessed Jesus, who had walked with Jesus. He says, we proclaim to you, and the you here is the next generation. Most of the people, or if not all, I don't, I don't know, most of the people in these churches in Ephesus weren't eyewitnesses. They hadn't actually walked with Jesus. And so John is saying here, I, as, as an old man here, I was an eyewitness to Jesus. I walked with him. I heard him. I saw him. I looked at him. I touched Jesus. So we who walked with Jesus, we are proclaiming to you the next generation. What we saw, John here is saying, we were there and we can confidently tell you what we experienced and what happened. So what is it specifically that John wants to proclaim, that John wants to tell these churches in Ephesus? He writes this, he says, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. And there's this beautiful phrase in there, the word of life. So all that we have experienced, we proclaim to you concerning the word of life of life. And John reminds the church, reminds the people that that which was from the beginning is the word of life. And this word of life is Jesus. Jesus is the incarnation um, of a God who has always existed from the beginning, God in human form. In fact, there's similar language in the beginning of John's gospel. Uh, John chapter 1. Listen to the similarities to, to this letter that John wrote. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 and also verse 14. He writes, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So John here is saying that Jesus is God. Jesus is God from the beginning. And Jesus is the word of life, the word that brings life. He'll continue in verse two. John writes, the life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. We proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. So this is what they're proclaiming. This word of life, this eternal life that has appeared. This is Jesus who is both God 
and human. He is God in human form and he brings life. And so John here is saying, as eyewitnesses, we can testify to this amazing truth that Jesus was with God in the beginning. He was God. He is God and he appeared to us and brings life. Verse three, John continues, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. I love this. Oh, this is one. I love it. Love it. So he, John is saying here, the whole reason we, the eyewitnesses, are going to tell you, this next generation who, who knows of Jesus but didn't walk with him, the whole reason we're going to tell you what we have seen and what we have experienced is so that you may have fellowship with us. Now, fellowship isn't a word that we often use unless you're in the church circle you'll hear it more often but this is a beautiful word just chock full of meaning the greek word for it is koinonia and it means to participate together to partner together to to share in or to have in common it's this very um profound uh, description of community being together, partnering together, sharing together, having in common together. And we see here that their fellowship, this fellowship that John is referring to, is centered around having seen and experienced the word of life, who's Jesus. They, that they have this fellowship because they have uh, seen and experienced Jesus. And so John is saying here, we're going to share this with you so that you too can have fellowship, can have community with us. And it gets even better. It's not just about fellowship with them. John then goes on and he says, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. Christ. So not only do we get to be in community together, but also as a whole, we get to be in fellowship with God. We get to be in community with God, partnering with, sharing and participating, having in common with each other and with God. Now, I don't know about you, but Sometimes this idea of fellowship is just kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around. And I think culturally, most of us are conditioned to think very individualistically. So this concept of, of fellowship and community like this is challenging for us. We often think of ourselves as an island. And then we think of ourselves as, as an island that has relationships with different people. You know, and so, and, and then those relationships are separate. And so this concept of fellowship is very different. It, it means being interconnected, partnering together, sharing together, being in community with. This is a bit of a foreign concept to us. And, and so sometimes also, I think we struggle with this concept because maybe we've been a part of communities that were unhealthy. And that were harmful and that makes us even more leery of this idea of fellowship this idea of community but the fellowship here that john is referring to this koinonia that he's referring to is a beautiful thing it's a beautiful fellowship born of a loving and relational god so this is this is different here. As Jesus followers, we get, we are invited to, we have the opportunity to experience this type of koinonia, this type of fellowship, this type of community, both with believers and with God. 
And, and another little tidbit here that I just want to add, you know, because of our individualistic mindset, often we would separate um, those two things and think that I have a personal relationship with God. And then I also have a personal relationship with this individual and then this individual. And we separate out all of those um, relationships and thinking, thinking that they're unrelated and separate from each other. And yet we see something different here in First John. Uh, Reuben Welsh in a little book called We Really Do Need Each Other puts it this way. This, this, he describes his fellowship with, with each other and also with God this way. He writes, the vertical line of Godward relationship and the horizontal line of human relationship are not two lines, but one line in a continuum. It all belongs together. Our life with him, with God, our life with God is tied to, is one with our life with our brothers and sisters. And I love this concept. And this actually came, um, came up in our discussion last week on Sunday. For those of you who were in person after the reading of 1 John, we had we had a little bit of a discussion as to what stood out to us. And, and someone brought this up, that whoever loves God must demonstrate that by loving people. And that those two things aren't separate. And that's here what this quote is saying as well. That the Godward relationship and the horizontal line of the human relationships, they're not two different lines. They're all they're they're interconnected. They're one continuum. You know, we see this in the teaching of Jesus when he was asked, what is the greatest command? He says, well, love God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind and strength, and also love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and love people. The last verse here that we're looking at in 1 John is verse 4. John writes, we write this to make our joy complete. You know, Jesus, this is the, the word of life, that being a part of this community, being a part of this fellowship with, with God and with us, John is saying, when you know this fellowship, when you know the word of life, when you get to be a part of it, we're writing this because this is what makes our joy complete. There is so much joy in knowing Jesus and in living in community, in fellowship with believers in God together. So what a jam-packed full um, little introduction to this letter of First John. You know, as I take a step back and I, and I look at this letter, in First John, I consider the context again of this letter. Like I mentioned before, all the controversy and the division and the ugliness that was happening in the first century that that caused John to write this letter. And and though our context differs greatly right now, there's plenty of controversy and there's plenty of division and there's plenty of ugly, ugliness present right now. And I love how John responds. And I think we can learn. We can learn a lot from this letter. John responds to, to all of that by saying, we are eyewitnesses of Jesus. We walked with him. We saw him. We touched him. We heard him. And we have such good news for you. Our good news is this, that he is God in human form, that he is the word of life. He brings life to us. And in Jesus, there is another way to engage life. There's another way to live. And Jesus invites us all into fellowship. He invites us to live into a loving community with both God and people. And I think for us today, for 
our our small community at the Vine Church and also our larger community in the Tri-Cities and, and zooming out in our world. This is my prayer for us, that we would have this type of koinonia, this type of fellowship, this type of loving community, and that this would be the defining characteristic of all the people of God, that this would be our defining characteristic. So my prayer is that we may be known in the Tri-Cities as a loving community, that we may be known as a people who demonstrate our love for God by caring deeply for the people around us and, and showing compassion and empathy and, and acting and speaking out in love. And friends, it has not lost on me that the only way this is possible is for Jesus to be at the very center of who we are and what we do. And so that is our invitation today. And that is my prayer. I invite you to pray with me as we close. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you so much for who you are, that you are a God of love and invitation. Jesus, we thank you that you are the word of life that brings life to us. Spirit, we thank you for working in us and transforming us to look more and more like the love, the loving Jesus that we are meant to, to emulate. God, we thank you. And we ask you to increase in us our capacity to love and also to be loved by you. Increase in us our capacity to show kindness and empathy. Increase in us the fruits of your spirit that our lives and what we do and what we say would constantly demonstrate our love for you and our love for our brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And I just um, encourage you to continue to read 1 John and to pray over it. Because I know we have a whole lot in store for us from the, first, the letter of 1 John.